Welcome to Points of Interest, a video series brought to you by the Investor Protection Clinic at Osgood Hall Law School and sponsored by the Law Foundation of Ontario. There are a variety of dispute resolution mechanisms available to investors who have suffered a financial loss as a result of wrongdoing by a firm or advisor. This episode will provide you with an overview of the arbitration program offered by the Investment Industry Regulatory Organization of Canada, also known as IROC. IROC is a national self-regulatory organization which oversees investment dealer firms and trading activity on equity and debt markets in Canada. Dealer firms are referred to by IROC as dealer members. Individuals approved by IROC to carry out the functions of dealer members are called approved persons. Approved persons include registered representatives who are those individuals who trade or advise on trades in securities, options, futures contracts, or futures contracts options. IROC carries out its regulatory responsibilities by setting and enforcing rules, most notably the IROC dealer member rules and universal market integrity rules. These relate primarily to the proficiency and conduct of dealer firms and registered employees, and also relate to the regulation of trading on marketplaces. As an organization, IROC is led by a president and CEO and governed by a board of directors. IROC is funded through annual fees collected from dealer firms, which are calculated based on the firm's capital, number of registrants, trading activities, and revenue. Investors who believe that their funds have been mismanaged by an IROC regulated firm or investors who have a complaint regarding the conduct of an IROC regulated firm or registered representative can submit a complaint to IROC. Though not all complaints will lead to an investigation, where IROC determines that its rules have been breached, IROC will take regulatory or disciplinary action. Disciplinary actions resulting from a complaint can include fines or suspensions, but do not include personal compensation for the harmed investor. If you're looking to receive compensation for the harm you have suffered as an investor, you may pursue your claim through the IROC Arbitration Program. Arbitration is an alternative dispute resolution process, which is conducted by an arbitrator who is chosen by both parties. Arbitration is generally less formal, less costly, and less time consuming than court, though the decision made by the arbitrator is legally binding in the same way as a judge's decision. If the investor chooses arbitration, IROC requires the investment firm to participate. Either side can be represented by a lawyer, however, legal representation is not required. IROC has designated ADR chambers to provide arbitration services for its disputes for most of Canada. This doesn't include Quebec. Quebec has designated the Canadian Commercial Arbitration Centre, or CCAC, as its service provider for the program. Now that you have a better understanding of IROC's role and know about the arbitration option, let's take a closer look at some procedural considerations that claimants should be aware of. My name is Ralph Gaston. I am the Director of Investigations with the Enforcement Department at IROC. An investor is eligible to file a claim through the IROC Arbitration Program if they reside in Canada, the firm at which their advisor is employed is regulated by IROC, they try to first resolve the dispute directly with the firm, and the relevant facts and events took place after June 30th, 1998. June 30th, 1998 is the relevant date for Ontario residents, although dates vary from province to province. Investors should confirm the applicable date for their province before seeking relief through IROC arbitration. There are two online sources for information about registered dealers and individuals. First, IROC's website includes an area titled Dealers We Regulate, which includes a list of dealer member firms regulated by IROC. Second, the website has an advisor report where you can search the database of registered individuals. You can also search the CSA National Registration Database. As long as your claim is eligible and you have attempted to resolve the dispute directly with the IROC regulated firm, there is no other restriction on when you can file for arbitration. The maximum amount which can be awarded under the IROC arbitration program is $500,000 including a cross-claim 
but excluding interest, arbitration fees, and legal costs. There's a cost to using IROC arbitration, but generally the costs are lower than those of pursuing civil litigation. Each arbitration service has a rate schedule for the cost of the arbitrator and the administrative fees related to an arbitration application. Investors in Quebec should consult CCAC, and investors everywhere else in Canada should consult ADR Chambers. Whether an investor will be required to pay the costs of the investment firm depends on the circumstances. At the beginning of the arbitration program, the investor will have a choice between two options regarding how the arbitrator will award legal costs at the end of the hearing. The options are, one, that the arbitrator may, in their discretion, award legal costs against the party, or two, that the arbitrator may not award legal costs against the party unless they find that the party concerned has acted in a manner that may be characterized as unfair, vexatious, improper, in bad faith, or has unnecessarily and unreasonably prolonged the proceedings. The decision is final and binding on the parties who would have also agreed to waive their right to appeal at the beginning of the arbitration. IROC takes many steps to ensure the arbitrators remain independent. The IROC Board of Directors has approved an arbitration program that is structured to be independent. IROC Rule 37.1 mandates that all investment firms regulated by IROC participate in the arbitration program. In addition, IROC has selected independent professional arbitration firms to operate the program. They are the CCAA for Quebec residents and ADR Chambers for the rest of the country. Further, IROC staff, whose daily work involves regulating activities of dealer member firms and their registered representatives, do not have any involvement with the arbitration program except for procedural oversight and reporting on statistics about the program. Theoretically, yes, an investor could file a civil claim and then choose to go through arbitration. In practical terms, an investor is choosing one of the options. If the investor and the firm sign an arbitration agreement, that is the route that will be taken to resolve the dispute. Civil courts would not tend to intervene if the same claim is currently proceeding through arbitration. OBSI does not look at investor complaints where arbitration has been chosen as the dispute mechanism. There is typically a tolling agreement when an OBSI complaint is launched that suspends the running of the limitation period during OBSI's review. If an investor does not accept OBSI's recommendation at the end of that process, they have an option to proceed to IROC arbitration or in court. Typically, in the IROC arbitration program, the parties would sign an arbitration agreement where they agree that the arbitrator's decision would be final and legally binding, and all rights to appeal would be generally excluded. Now that you have a broader understanding of what IROC arbitration is and the procedural considerations investors should be mindful of, let's take a closer look at the steps involved in pursuing a claim through IROC arbitration. Step one, complain directly to the investment firm or advisor and wait for a response. In order to be eligible for IROC arbitration, you must have complained directly to your investment firm or advisor. Your complaint to the firm or advisor should be in writing. Step two, if you are not satisfied with the response from your firm or advisor and you wish to escalate your complaint, determine the right remedy for you. Before you seek relief through the IROC arbitration program, you may want to consider whether other dispute resolution mechanisms like OBSI's non-binding dispute resolution process or civil litigation are appropriate. For more information on OBSI's dispute resolution process and civil litigation, please see the Points of Interest episodes, Navigating the OBSI Complaint Process, and Is Civil Litigation Right for You in Your Claim? You may also want to consider submitting a complaint to IROC or your local securities regulator. Step 3. File a Notice of Arbitration. Once you have determined that IROC arbitration is the right fit for you, you must begin the process by submitting a completed Notice of Arbitration form or equivalent application to ADR Chambers and pay the corresponding filing fee. The Notice of Arbitration should be mailed to the Head Office of ADR Chambers. The Notice of Arbitration must include the names and addresses of the parties, 
a summary statement of the facts in dispute and the amount of compensation claimed, and any supporting documents or information that can help to establish your claim. Step four, wait for confirmation from ADR Chambers. ADR Chambers will forward a copy of the notice of arbitration and all accompanying documents to the investment firm. ADR Chambers will also arrange a preliminary meeting. Step five, receive a response to the notice of arbitration. The investment firm has to provide a response to the notice of arbitration and initiate any counterclaims against the applicant investor within seven days. Step six, the preliminary meeting. An ADR Chambers administrator will conduct a preliminary meeting with the parties, usually via teleconference call. At the preliminary meeting, the parties and the representatives, if applicable, will appoint an arbitrator, identify the main issues in dispute, create a timeline for discovery and exchange of documents, submission of written statements, and determine any other matter that will assist the parties in settling their dispute. Step seven, the parties exchange documents and written statements. Each party will exchange documents and written statements that include a description of the issues, the amounts being claimed, the supporting facts, and relief or remedy sought. The statements will be exchanged based on the timeline agreed upon at the preliminary meeting. Step eight, the hearing. Typically, a date for the hearing will be agreed upon by the parties in consultation with the ADR administrator, and the parties can agree that the hearing can take place via telephone or video conference call. The length of the hearing will vary from case to case and will be determined based on the complexity of the facts and events in dispute. Investors should be aware that the length of the hearing will have an impact on the total cost of the arbitration process. This is because the arbitrator's fee is calculated based on an hourly rate. Step nine, reach a settlement or have the arbitrator grant an arbitral award. At any stage of the proceeding, the arbitrator may encourage the parties to settle their dispute. If the parties reach an agreement, ADR chambers must be informed. The settlement can be recorded in the form of an arbitral award. Alternatively, if the decision is left to the arbitrator, an award must be given in writing within 30 days of the completion of the hearing. With the consent of the parties and the arbitrator, the timeline providing an arbitral award can be modified. For a more detailed description of the steps involved in the IROC arbitration program, see the ADR Chamber's IROC Arbitration Rules of Procedure linked below. As we bring this episode to a close, here are the key points of interest from navigating the IROC arbitration program. One, the Investment Industry Regulatory Organization of Canada, also known as IROC, is a national self-regulatory body overseeing investment dealers in Canada. Two, submitting a formal complaint to IROC which can lead to both regulatory and disciplinary action being taken against the firm or registered representative is separate and distinct from the IROC arbitration program, which can lead to financial compensation for harmed investors. For more information on submitting a complaint to IROC, visit the relevant link listed below. Three, IROC offers an arbitration program in which the firms it regulates are required to participate. Arbitrators can award investors personal compensation up to $500,000 for investment harms suffered. Arbitration is a less expensive and less time-consuming alternative to civil litigation. Four, investor claims must meet certain eligibility requirements. There is a cost associated with IROC arbitration, including administrative and arbitrator's fees. Investors have the option to opt out of the arbitrator's discretion to award costs against any party. This feature is unique to the IROC arbitration program. The arbitrator's decision is legally binding on the parties and legal representation is not required. Five, before pursuing IROC arbitration, be sure to submit a complaint directly to your investment firm or advisor. If the result is not satisfactory, then consider whether IROC arbitration is the appropriate next step for you. The Investor Protection Clinic at Osgoode Hall Law School acts for investors who believe their investments have been mishandled and who cannot afford legal representation. The Investor Protection Clinic is the first clinic in Canada to offer free legal advice to retail investors. If you have any questions about the IPC services, this episode, or any other episode in the Points of Interest series, please feel free to contact us.